Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay. So, the third part of this uh, three lectures on Mahavira Ganita Sangraha will be on the areas and volumes. So, these the outline, we will first discuss the plane figures, regular figures like circle, Dirga Vruta, annulus, then the results for this uh, circumference and diameter of a circle, then segment of a circle. Then <coughs> We talk about the so called Janya operations which I had introduced earlier, rational triangles, quadrilaterals, then regular volumes, uniform volume, then tapering cross sections, then volume of a sphere, then uh, time to fill a cistern which uh, is discussed for the first time by Mahavira, then shadow problems. Okay. So, for instance, if you have a <coughs> Vishama Chaturashra, any quadrilateral which is, uh, uh, there is no relation among the, uh, the various sites, A, B, C, D, that is the Vishama Chaturashra. Approximate area as in uh, Brahma's Puttasiddhanta, it is given as B plus D by 2 into A plus C by 2, approximate area. And, uh, but uh, for an annulus, he gives as a uh, annulus means you know this is the region between the two circles okay between two uh, the circumferences of the circle so c1 and c2 are the circumference so then the area is given as c1 plus c2 divided by 2 into b one can check that is exact this is exactly correct then the circle approximate circumference i mean even according to mahavira it is approximate it is given as 3 into diameter. So, essentially he is taking pi is equal to 3, but the approximate area is 3 into diameter by 2 whole square. Okay. So, essentially pi is taken, you know, very crude value of pi that is 3 is taken. So, then for the first time he is talking of a dirga vrutta or an ayata vrutta, which is essentially an ellipse. We do not know whether he meant an ellipse, but it is some kind of a dirga rutta, you know, some one side is elongated with respect to the other. The approximate circumference is given as 2 into this 2a plus b, this is a shorter radius, this is a longer radius, 2 into 2a plus b, and the approximate area is given as b into 2 into a plus of b. So, this is the what he says. So, this and for the okay for the segments and perpendicular he gives the usual results i will not repeat it it has been done several times right so if a triangle is there then uh, these are the base the segments are a1 and a2 and these are perpendicular so the results were given in brahma sputta siddhanta even earlier also they were given so, same results Mahavira is uh, stating. Then, area of a triangle and cyclic quadrilateral, same as in Brahma's Putta Siddhanta, and diagonals of a quadrilateral also he considers that is also the same as in Brahma's Putta. Now, he goes back to the circumference and area of a circle again. So, in verse 60, he says, Vrutta Kshetra Vyaso Dashapada Gunito Bhavet Parikshepaha. Vyasa Chatur Bhaga Gunaha Paridhi Paradharma Adharm Param Ardha Ardhe Tat. The diameter of the circular figure multiplied by the square root of 10 becomes the circumference in measure. The circumference multiplied by one fourth of the diameter gives the area. So, he says that the exact circumference of a circle is root 10 into diameter. So, he is taking essentially pi is equal to root 10. So, I told you earlier also, this is some kind of a Jaina value you will say because various Jain texts will give this number. It is an approximate and area is 1 4 circumference into diameter. These of course exact, whatever be the 
relation between circumference and diameter. So, this area itself is exact. So, this is understandable probably in fact uh, this is uh, explained in commentaries to Leelavati. So, what is being done is suppose you have a circle so okay, divided into segments like this small segments. So, if a small segment this arc can be approximated by the chord itself that it can be considered as a straight. So, then the area of this this bit this segment is you know suppose this is some um, delta c. So, area will be delta c into the height height is the radius itself into r divided by 2. So, this is the delta area that is the area of the segment and if you area of the circle will be is equal to sum over all these segments. So, when you sum over all these segments r by 2 anyway will be constant the radius is the same that will come out and sigma delta c that is essentially the circumference right r by 2 into circumference is not it. So, because you are going over the whole circle when you are measuring the whole area. So, this is precisely the same thing instead of radius he is using diameter. So, 1 by 4 circumference into diameter. So, this is independent of the relation between the circumference and diameter. So, probably that is how they got it and certainly that is how they got it later you know this result by Bhaskara and others ok. Then the circumference and area of an ellipse the square of the Vyasakruti shed gunita visangunayama kruti yuta padam paridhi vyasa chaturbhaga gunascha ayata vruttasya sukshma phalam. The square of the shorter diameter is multiplied by 6 and the square of twice the length as measured by the lo longer diameter ayama is added to this. This square root of the sum gives the measure of the circumference and this measure of the circumference multiplied by one fourth of the shorter diameter gives the minutely accurate measure of the area of an elliptical figure. So, what he is saying is the circumference of a. So, we our uh, notation is that you know. So, this b is the or uh, 2 b is the shorter diameter and 2 a is the longer diameter. So, in that case you have circumference is his result is this and the area is b into square root of 6 into b square plus 4 a square. Of course, when you see that um, when you take b is equal to a he will you will get the value for the circle ok with uh, pi is equal to root 10, but for an, for an ellipse this is not correct ok. But we do not know he, he might not have meant ellipse, so it is not very clear one has to look at uh, the commentaries little more uh, in detail. The exact values of the circumference and the area are also shown in the slide for comparison. So, then next he will talk about the area of a segment. So, we will uh, come to that. So, segment is this you know that is if a circle is there. So, this is a segment this is a segment that is what he is taking and this is the <coughs> C what he is talking and this is the arrow ok. So, what is the yeah P. So, this is a segment he is referring to then in that case he says Ishtapada gunascha guno dashapada gunitascha bhavati ganita phalam yavas samsthana kshetre dhanurakare cha vigneyam. So, dhanurakara is the essentially the figure of a bow. It should be known that the measure of the string chord, a chord you see, multiplied by one fourth of the measure of the arrow and then multiplied by the square root of 10 gives rise to the accurate value of the area in the case of a figure having the outline of a bow as also in the case of a figure resembling the 
longitudinal section of a yava grain. I do not know that is what he says. So, essentially what he is saying is that if you have a segment like this, the chord is C and the arrow is P, then the area is C into P by 4 into root 10. So, root 10 is basically what is the, the value for pi is taking. So, even if you replace by pi it is not correct. It seems to be based some scholars feel that it seems to be based on the fact that the area of a semicircle, see this kind of a thing will work. So, here the, the base is the 2 r the diameter and its height the arrow is r. So, 2 r into r by 4 into pi. So, pi r squared by 2 that is correct right that is the semicircle area. So, it seems to be basing on that. So, but it is a good attempt. Then the <laughs> diagonals perpendiculars in area of a hexagon. So, he gives it in the next verse. Buja buja kruti kruti varga varga with triti guna eta krame naiva sutya avalambaka kruti dhana krutayascha shatsake kshetre. So, in the case of a regular six sided figure, the measure of the side, the square of the side, the square of the square of the side multiplied respectively by 2, 3, and 3 give rise in the same order to the values of the diagonal of the square of the perpendicular under the square of the measure of the area. So, that is what he is saying. So, essentially what he is saying is that this is a hexagonal figure right. So, A is the side and this P is the perpendicular. So, he is saying that the diagonal is 2 A which is obvious the P is root 3 into A. So, one can very easily check it and the area is 3 root 3 by 2 into A squared ok. I mean of course, he is giving the square of the measure of the area. So, square of is 9 into 3 by 4 into a square whole square you see that is what he is giving. But if you take the square root you get this. So, this is the area of a hexagon. So, then he talks of the genya operations ok generating triangles with rational sides, triangles, quadrilaterals and various figures with rational sides you see. So, as uh, Professor Srinivas pointed out, I mean that is a generation of the words in grammar. So, I think some same idea I see which we working you know generation of you know valid rational figures kind of a thing. So, <coughs> so you take the bijas, bijas means the starting points you know the seeds you start with a b that itself may not be the value of the side or of the or operate of the triangle. So, the verse one of the verses describes the procedure to construct an isosceles trapezium with the aid of two right triangles. So, start with two right triangles then they construct the isosceles trapezium in the following manner. So, this is the perpendicular side of the first triangle plus perpendicular side of the second triangle. So, so this is taken to be the perpendicular side first triangle is a square minus b square is the perpendicular side and the second triangle is c e square minus d square and top side is the difference of the perpendicular sides. So, he is starting actually with these tri right triangles a square plus b square a square minus b square is the diagonal 2 a sorry upright 2 a b is the side and a square plus b square is the diagonal clearly I have already mentioned that this square is equal to this square plus this square right. So, similarly another triangle like this only thing is you take 2 c d is equal to 2 a b c and d may not be equal to a and b, but uh, this relation is there if that is true then he will give a rational uh, trapezium like this. The perpendicular also is rational that is what is you know important. So, you take the diagonal to be second triangle diagonal c squared plus d squared. So, a smaller segment of base a e is perpendicular side of first triangle. So, a squared minus b squared perpendicular h e is base side of first or second triangle. So, this 2 c d is equal to 2 a b and the lateral side a h other flanks as they sometimes they are called. So, is equal to diagonal of first triangle. So, it is a square plus b square. So, this is the finally, this is the isosceles triangle got from this. Everything is you know rational I mean even the segments and all that right. So, that is important. So, next uh, 
we construct a right, uh, several other right triangles are constructed. Suppose you have a right triangle with bijas this square root of 2 a b into a plus b into square root of 2 a b into a minus b. So, for this upright you take it to be this. So, this square minus this square and base you take it to be this into this. So, 4 a b into a square minus b squared. Diagonal of course, you take it to be square root of the sum of these squares, squares of this. So, 4 a b into a square plus b squared. If you take this and the second triangle the b jaws are taken to be this a square minus b is in 2 b that is the perpendicular is this base is this and diagonal is this. Then in that case you can get a nice trapezium with 3 equal sides okay. base the summit and the flanks are equal and the base is this. So, base is taken to be great greater perpendicular side minus smaller perpendicular sides. So, it is given by this and either of the lateral sides is a smaller diagonal which is a squared plus b squared whole squared. So, like that you know. So, that is how it is constructed. So, this will um, so these are the various uh, interesting things you know that will be certainly certainly one of the aims of the book is not just scholarly work you know it is also to instruct uh, uh, students and learners of mathematics. So, all these will uh, give some good idea of you know how to manipulate with various things. So, then the construction of a cyclic quadrilateral he talks about. Suppose you construct a cyclic quadrilateral with area A. So, let x1, x2, x3, x4 be the four chosen divisors, some divisors okay. So, arbitrarily you take of course, everything is rational find this find this. So, then take the sides to be this s is a is equal to s minus a squared by x 1 s minus a squared by x 2 etcetera etcetera. So, then they are the sides of this cyclic quadrilateral and one can check that this plus this whole semi parameter is s we will get back that and uh, s minus a is a squared by x 1 and so on and so forth. But there is one tricky thing the area of this uh, cyclic quadrilateral will be sides a b c d we know the square root of s minus a into s minus b into s minus c. So, plugging that in you will get this the, the area of this cyclic quadrilateral with these sides right with these sides because s minus a will be a squared by x 1. So, <coughs> area is this, but originally you started with this area. So, this must be equal to a or x 1 x 2 x 3 is equal to a to the power of 6. So, this method will work only if x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 is equal to a to the power of 6. So, that is not uh, mentioned. So, probably he wanted the student to <laughs> figure it out or it is a fit of absent mindedness <laughs> we do not know. So, anyway so this is certainly not valid for arbitrary these things x 1 x 2 x 3 this has to satisfy that ok. So, then pillars and segments so, this is also very uh, even in Bhaskara later also you will see that you know lot of uh, time is uh, spent in you know constructing various uh, kinds of you know similar triangles and uh, things like that. So, here what is happening is so A, B and C, D are pillars with uh, A, B is equal to some A height of one pillar, C, D is equal to B another pillar, B, D is the distance between them. So, now this is stretched like this to some point E with a string. Similarly, this is from A you are stretching a string and uh, pinning it down at F. So, A and C are uh, okay, connected to F and D. So, B E suppose B E is equal to M this segment is M. So, then G E. So, the G E is C 1 is you get this they are nice results and g f is equal to c 2 is b into this no b into c plus m into this and uh, p the perpendicular this perpendicular is c 2 into a by c plus 1. There are some good symmetries in this that is what is very interesting you know there are some good symmetries in this. So, this will be can be kindly derived ok. So, using similar triangles ok. Then after the areas, then it comes to volumes. 
So, then uh, <coughs> sorry and before that of course, circumference of a triangle circling quadrilateral and duration between A and is S are the same as in uh, the earlier works and then the next chapter is an excavations, they have always call it excavations and it talks about the volume of a frustrum is the same as in uh, we spent some time yesterday explaining that right. So, how do you get the frustrum? This is a figure like this, is not it? So, tapering kind of a thing, is not it? So, these are frustrum kind of a thing. So, here this bottom portion this uh, is taken to be a, side, a square of side A is A prime. So, then uh, uh, Brahma Gupta had given the approximate volume somewhat a better approximate volume than exact and all that and we saw that the exact volume is correct. So, all these results are given by Mahavir also. So, then he talks of the volume of a sphere the half of the cube of half the diameter multiplied by 9 gives the approximate value of the cubical contents of a sphere. This approximate value in multiplied by 9 and divided by 10 or neglecting the remainder gives rise to the accurate value of the cubical measure. Vyasartha dhanartha guna nava gola vyavaharikam ganitam tad dasham dasham amsham nava gunama shesha sukspam phalam bhavati. So, dasham amsha and all this multiplied by 9 divided by 10. So, those are talked about. So, what he is saying is that, so earlier also had, uh, the more accurate volume of the sphere is given to be this. So, different uh, this curious d by 2 whole cube into 9 by 2 into 9 by 10. The correct value is of course, 4 pi by 3 into d by 2 whole cube right. This is what we know 4 pi 4 pi r 4 pi by 3 r cube. So, if you equate this, you will get 4 pi by 3 is equal to 9 by 2 into 9 by 10. So, essentially it is equivalent to, so the formula is uh, okay, if you take the, if you, if you um, assume that he has taken the circumference by diameter as a pi to be this 3 into 81 by 8. So, at least it is better than 3. Okay. So, then he talks of some uh, water pipes filling a cistern or some vessel ok. So, pipes are there. So, this is some you know ancient equivalent of a syntax tank ok. So, they are all leading water you see this is a very relevant problem especially for Chennai. <laughs> this one should know these things. So, it gives the time is which is required to fill up the tank. Vapi pranalika swasva kala bhakta savarna vichedaha tadjuti bhaktam rupam dinam shakaha syat pranalika yutya taddina bhaga hataste tadjala gata yo bhavanti tad vyapyam. The number one representing each the bracket is as I told you sometimes where some things may be you know missing in the verse, but uh, it has to be uh, understood ok. So, as uh, no western scholar has objected, so we can take it that you know <laughs> it is reasonably even can assume this. The number 1 representing each of the pipes is divided by the time corresponding to each of them separately and the resulting quotients represented at fractions are reduced so as to have a common denominator. One divided, divided by the sum of these fractions with the common denominator gives the fraction of the day within which the well would become filled by all the pipes pouring in their water together, those fractions with the common denominator multiplied by this resulting fraction of the day gives rise to the measures of the flow of water into that well. So, essentially one <coughs> see let um, there are various pipes. So, let T i be the time or the day time may be in units of days you can take or uh, so it can be a fraction also taken by the water flowing through the pipe i to fill the volume ok let ti be this thing. So, fraction filled in one day by the ith pipe you see. So, to fill the whole volume it takes 
time T i. So, in one day it is taking how much it is filling 1 by T i right. And if all the pipes are open amount filled in one, one day is this okay. You have to sum over all these inverses and hence the number of days or fraction of days needed to fill the system that is the whole thing that is equal to 1 over all these inverses. So, 1 over this. So, that is a correct result exact result. So, he gives an example Chetasraha Pranalikaha Susta Traikaika Prapurayati Vapim Vitri Chatuhu Pancham Shaihi Dinasya Katibihi Dinam Shaihi Dinam Shaihi Staha. There are four pipes leading to a well, and among them each fills the well in order in half 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5 of a day. Then in how much of a day will all of them together fill the well and each of them to what extent okay. So, how much is this thing and uh, after they fill you know in uh, this thing you know what is the time taken and what is the contribution from each pipe that of course can be calculated. So, that is what he is saying. Okay. So, then again he comes to the volume with uh, uniform cross section. So, the one of the verses will say that the volume of an excavation, some of they use the word excavation in all these things, is a product of the area of cross section multiplied by the depth or length. So, this is the. See, once some important topic is discussed, it is always discussed by the early, you know, later uh, mathematicians which follow, you know. So, this system, this uh, water pipe problem and this uh, excavations and all that, they are discussed by in Lilavati, they are discussed by Thakura Feru in. When is the Sara Komudi like that, you know, various people will, and they may be adding and little bit, you know, or modifying it to suit the some uh, new things. Similarly, volume with a trapezoidal cross section is given to be if the area of cross section is we know that if A is the base and uh, B is the summit and H is the height, so area of cross section is A plus B by 2 sorry a plus b by 2 into h right that is the area of cross section. So, this multiplied by this L. So, that is the volume with trapezoidal cross section ok. So, then he talks of a sloping platform. So, <coughs> here it is the area of cross section is frustum etcetera he has talked about now he is talking about a new thing. The area of cross section is not constant, but varies uniformly. See suppose we have an isosceles trapezium where the base is A, summit is B and the height H is at one end and over a length L it slopes uniformly to a base A, height is D and the summit is B is B plus A minus B into 1 minus D by H. So, what is the volume of the platform? In fact, where it is posed is the following. So, one starts with an uniform cross section. where the base is A, the summit is B and the height is H. So, here the volume is clear. So, it is the area of cross section into this length. So, now suppose this structure is struck like this you know, struck like this. So, that what remains is this you know. So, up to this only up to some height d from the bottom that is there and then. So, this is what is remaining. So, this uniform this uh, structure it is struck and so that at this end the summit is a the, ba the base is a the summit is b and the height is h. Here at this end at the left end the base is a and uh, the height is only d and these are decreased uniform uh, correspondingly. So, 
it is no longer uniform. So, the area of cross section is changing and also you see here not only is it changing here over the cross section, it is changing in this direction also and this much amount has fallen, this much brick has fallen or this much structure has fallen down. So, what is remaining? So, that is what we have we have to find out the volume of that. So, in terms of bricks for instance, so if the original number of bricks is there you know how much how many bricks have fallen and how many are remaining. So, that is how that is the thing we have to calculate. So, the volume of the remaining structure. So, that is what we have to calculate. The result it gives is so at one end it is an isosceles trapezium with sides you know base A summit B height A H and the other side the base A is A summit is B plus A minus B into 1 minus D by H you see it has proportionately you know this height has become D. So, you can calculate that this base this one this uh, summit will be become B plus A minus B into 1 minus D by H right. When D is equal to 0 top and bottom are the same at the left end and width is A. When D is equal to H that is uniform cross section the second term is 0 and width at the top is B. For an arbitrary D the width at the left end is B plus A minus B into 1 minus D by H. So, then at some intermediate uh, these things you know. So, then what is how much is this the cross section the base will be A only one can show that this is B plus A minus uh, this is your end B plus A minus H by L into 1 minus D by H into X ok. So, this is sloping you see remember uniformly. So, this is the kind of a thing and the height will be again by rule of proportion you see. So, here this is the height D and here it is the height H and what is the height here proportionately one could when you calculate and you will get this by rule of proportion and the Ganitata Sahara Sangraha result for this volume is L H by 6 into 2 A plus B plus D. So, this is the what he is saying is this is the length L ok, this is the H, this is B A and uh, this is the uh, height at the other end where it has fallen right. So, L H by 6 into 2 A plus B plus D and uh, I have tried to do it by using integration exactly and this seems to be the result L H by So, this first term is correct and uh, these are the things which are there. So, 2A plus B plus D he is getting, but what should we one get is this. So, so he has made some of these things. Of course, these are more complicated thing, you know, simple arguments will not so easily work, you know, like a first term that may not work here. So, probably that is why he has not got the correct result. So, anyway, you should check this what is the correct thing, you can check it using. So, this is as usual. So, after this areas then volumes then he will talk about shadows. So, he is talking of the shadow of a gnomon. So, this is the shadow is O B S is equal to S we put it the gnomon is O A ok. So, this is the um, sun let us say. So, from that the shadow of the gnomon is uh, falling here. So, this is called a zenith distance. Okay. This is called a zenith distance that is what is happening is that so this is the it is called a celestial sphere. Okay. So, this is the horizon. So, this is the zenith okay, topmost point of the sky okay. and then so, sun is here let us say. So, this is your no man. So, now the sun can be somewhere here at some arbitrary time ok and this is is falling like this you know. So, this is a shadow this is a shadow ok and this that will that shadow will depend clearly on this angle. Of course, this is 
not to scale at all. Actually, this distance is you know uh, much much more than this. So, for just for clarity, I have written like that. So, this angle, the angle at which this uh, sun's rays are falling, so that 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 is called a zenith distance, okay. And then 90 minus zenith distance that is called the altitude, altitude of h. How many degrees above sun is on the sky? See, that is the altitude. And how much he is below from the zenith? So, that is the zenith distance. So, one can see that. So, if this is the case, if s is the shadow and uh, what is it taking for the yeah a is the nomen height so and then is also z so tan z is s by a so that is the correct result tan z or cot a because a plus z is 90 degrees so that is s by a so this is correct and uh, he says mahavira says that the time elapsed after sunrise or time at 2 elapsed before sunset is time t is equal to 1 over 2 into s by a plus 1 unit units of day. Okay. So, this is the result for he is giving 1 over 1 divided by 2 into s by a plus 1. So, one does not know how he got this, but he has stated this result because time you know one certainly knows that this cannot be correct you know because the time is a little more complicated it will not be given in terms of the shadow so easily. In fact, it is correct only when for a very particular case when z is equal to a is equal to 45 degrees when the la latitude and phi uh, and the uh, we call phi and the declination of the sun are ignored. Okay. So, that is especially at the equator this is true especially the two only on March 21st and September 23rd. So, then in that case and also when this z is 45 degrees then in this case according to the Ganeshara Sangraha t is equal to 1 by 4 of a day when this is 45 degrees and according to the formula also t will be sin inverse cos z and when z is equal to a is equal to 45 degrees t is equal to 45 degrees corresponds to 1 fourth of a day okay. because um, total 360 degrees is uh, uh, I mean day means uh, from sunrise to sunset. So, that is correspond to 180 degrees. Okay. So, 1 fourth of a day, day will be 45 degrees. So, the only, only very particular at only one instant that two at a one particular place this is true, but it may be approximate one should one should see may be for Chennai it may not be too bad for certain days because the latitude is low. Okay. So, one should investigate the very crude formula. Then um, the shadow will continue. So, he will note from this thing that this is you know the shadow divided by it is constant for all object okay, naturally because you know if the this depends only on this uh, this ratio it will do only depend on the angle at which the sun rise is uh, hitting right. So, it is constant for all objects. So, normally it is written in terms of the measure of the shadow of a man. So, he says that the kala nayana dinagata shesha samasonitaha kalaha Sambhas chaya stambha pramana bhaktaiva porushi chaya. The measure of the shadow of a pillar divided by the measure of the height of the pillar gives rise to the measure of the shadow of a man in terms of his own height. So, what is essentially saying is that the shadow of a pillar divided by height of the pillar is equal to shadow of the man <coughs> divided by the height of the man. So, that is correct. So, now he is talking about a shadow on a wall. So, this is the the pillar is there. So, you are not observing the whole shadow there is a wall intervening. Okay. So, then what is the shadow? Uh, this, uh, what is this height? What is this height? What is the this thing that yeah height suppose is a suppose the distance between the pillar this is the pillar. So, this is the wall. So, distance between c this thing is c and uh, the shadow itself is x. Okay. So, then 
what is the height of this. So, this is also uh, relevant. So, he is gay. he says that the essentially so there is a pillar of height A, there is a wall in front of it at a distance C from it. So, let the height of the shadow be H, sorry, uh, height, uh, high, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, height of the shadow on the wall, height of the shadow on the wall that is what is this, that is H. Let B be the measure of the human shadow in terms of the man's height. So, then the above verse says that H is A into B minus C by B. Okay. So, this is the shadow of A. So, this is an important result and is again you know relevant for instance for lunar eclipse because so if this is the earth okay, so sun rays is coming and suppose this is the moon's orbit. So, there is no wall, but anyway so this is where the moon is uh, traveling. So, then the shadow of uh, this thing that will be shadow region will be this. Okay. So, the moon is completely in this you see then the full polar, the lunar eclipse and partially it will be partial this thing. Okay. So, I will come to that. Yeah. B is a measure of the human shadow in terms of the man height. Not shown in the figure, not shown in the figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you have to add another figure with you know the man this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, you know the tan z is uh, you know my human shadow divided by the man height. So, that tan uh, shadow tan of the angle or quarter of the angle that is that h is a into. So, the this is the result that is given again it comes from similar triangles. So, <coughs> if x is the distance between the wall and the tip of the shadow then x is b h. So, that is so, because this is constant x is b into h because x by h is constant. Okay. The shadow divided by height is equal to the shadow of a man that is where the b comes is a proportionality constant basically x by h is essentially equal to the human shadow divided by his height. So, that is what it comes here that is the b here. So, x is equal to b h. So, if you take uh, this triangle a divided by c plus x is equal to h by x. So, these are two similar triangles right. So, a divided by c plus x is equal to h by x. So, which is 1 by b because that is the definition. So, a is c plus x by b is c plus b h by b. So, h is a b minus c by b. So, that is how it is the height and the shadow at any given time can be calculated like this. So, then again he gives some example Minchati Hastaha Stambo Bhitti Stambantaram Kara Ashto Purusha Chayad Vigna Bhitti Gata Stambhava Kimsyat. The pillar is 20 hastas in height. The interval between the pillar and the wall and with the shadow of walls is 8 hastas. The human shadow at that time is twice the man's height. So, that is where this B is given. The human shadow at the time is twice the man's height. So, the B is given here essentially. What is the measure of that portion of the pillar shadow which is on the wall? So, this can be tried as an exercise. So, then one of the last problems which he discusses in the shadow is a, a slanting pillar. So, his A B is a slanting pillar and A C is its shadow. Suppose A E A D is the same pillar in vertical position. Then if that is so, when in vertical position its shadow will be A E and let R be the ratio of a man to his um, man's shadow to his height. I think it should be man's shadow to his height and B G is a perpendicular from B and D, B on A D. So, this is a, the distance between this and this. So, this essentially gives the amount of slant. So, this you can say that this is the pillar and is slanting like this. So, that the perpend this perpendicular is B G. So, it is a measure of the slant of the pillar A B. So, then in that case, so one can show that so essentially uh, maybe it is better to
so this is the this will be one this thing so suppose it is slanting so then in that case so it is a so this is your b this is your g this is your d so this is your e and ac when it is an ac so this b this thing will be that will be the um, d e one uh, sorry um, go past the three point yeah slanting is this actually and suppose this is the slanting pillar yeah so this will be like this okay so this is b so this is g kind of thing right okay so this is the figure and this is f okay so the shadow of in the vertical position that is ae shadow in the slanting position is ab i mean a shadow shadow in the slanting position is a uh, c a c yeah so then from the similar triangles bf by fc so that is equal to ad by ae okay because there will be similar triangles because the angle will be the same right the triangle will be the same so that is equal to the shadow by the objects effective height that is 1 by r okay or rather the height divided by the shadow is 1 by r because r is shadow by height so then bf is equal to ag in the um, figure bf ag that is the perpendicular thing so that is square root of ab squared minus bg squared and fc is equal to ac minus bg so bf squared is ab squared minus bg squared so you can see that ab is ac minus bg sorry uh, ab squared minus bg squared so from this we have to ab 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 squared minus bg squared is equal to bf squared and from this so finally you get this whole squared into 1 by r squared so essentially what you get is a quadratic equation for bg so the quadratic equation for bg and so and the solution is given by ac minus this kind of a thing so you can find out the slant also suppose you are given the uh, height of that thing a uh, pillar and uh, that is uh, a ab is the height of that pillar and which is slanting and uh, its uh, um, shadow is ac okay so then and r is the shadow by height so then this will be the thing okay because if it is not slanting you see the shadow by the height will be given by r only right shadow by height is r if there is no slant is a vertical thing then shadow by height is r but it is slanting it is different and precisely this is the formula for that and satisfies the quadratic equation okay so this is uh, some kind of a new problem that he has discussed compared to the brahmasputra siddhanta similarly the rule for arriving at the shadow of a pillar due to the light of the lamp so that is given the height of the lamp is diminished by the height of the pillar and is divided by the height of the tile okay if the quotient so obtained by means of the quotient so obtained the horizontal distance between the lamp and the tile pillar is divided the measure of the shadow of the tile is arrived at so essentially what is you get the old result that you know that if this is the pillar and is a lamp and uh, this is the height of the lamp and so then in that case say now it is a nomen basically you know pillar means a nomen so then s by a is equal to c plus s by b so the shadow s is equal to ac by b minus c this we had discussed you know earlier also so it is essentially giving the same problem so this is the so essentially the last uh, problem the class of problems that are discussed in this text with the shadow problem okay so we see in the arithmetical operations arithmetic various uh, um, operations 
and uh, results connected with arithmetic. So, and then uh, you go to areas and then excavations and then shadow. So, it is a general typical way in which a textbook is organized. So, this essentially uh, covered some you know some of the basic things and the important things that Pandita uh, Sarasangraha covers. Okay. And I have also emphasized what is the new thing he is doing compared to the earlier mathematicians. And as I told, it is a very extensive work with uh, lot of examples, lot of examples and given in nice examples in good verse. So, it is worth you know having a look at. The references are given here. Okay, thank you.